Sherman, I believe, out for Grand Valley off that starting rush. Woo! Hard hit on the uh, on the Cavs at number 44, Alcantara. We did. Uh, I asked the head referee Felix Prony for some clarification. We had a bit of a, a bit of confusion on some of the older rules. The older rules stated that if a ball rolled out of bounds, you were allowed to pick that ball up and place it on the sideline where the ball went out of bounds. The, the rule now is when a ball goes out of bounds, uh, players out of the game, players on the sidelines are not allowed to touch the ball. You let the ball run its path. The only people allowed to put balls back into play are the referees. Uh, so that was something we need a little bit of clarification on. I don't think it caused any major issues, uh, but it was kind of a, a point of contention for the two teams a few minutes ago. Well, when all the balls were in Saginaw Valley's side and Grand Valley players were trying to put the ball back into place so one of their players could actually get a ball, that was where it came into play as a big problem. Um, but, I mean, it, it, it was clarified and, and everybody's on the same page now. So, <laughs> Grand Valley already down four players. Saginaw Valley with their full roster still on the court. And I think we're seeing a little bit of, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember if it was you or Jazzy that talked about it earlier, Grand Valley's tendency to kind of play a one for all. Uh, everyone on their team is a very capable dodgeball player and they tend to kind of play this thing where everyone does their own thing. Uh, whereas from Saginaw Valley, we see much more of a concerted team effort. And had a one for one there, Saginaw player and one Grand Valley player out. Ooh, really hard, oh! Really hard throw by number 17, Terenzi for Grand Valley, followed up by an excellent catch. Uh, we are gonna try to get a little bit better angle, get some more plays from Grand Valley, but again, after the half when they switch sides, we'll be getting a uh, forward-facing view of Grand Valley's play. Ooh, fast retreat by number 11 for Saginaw Valley and just barely ducking out of the way from another humongous throw. I believe it might have been from number 17, Terenzi for Grand Valley, who has an absolute cannon. You can see, you can see number seven there who is uh, trying to set up a team throw on this right corner. He's calling out numbers that he sees or players that he sees. Um, behind the ball, so he's putting the ball right in front of his mouth so they can't see uh, the, the number of the player they're calling out. So they're trying to set something up and it's, no worry not, Saginaw Valley's really being aggressive on the counterattacks. Failed attempted a catch by, uh, couldn't get his number from Saginaw Valley. No, no, could not get the team catch, so number 17, Terenzi's out, and that's one of their biggest arms making his way to the sideline. So nine players left in for Saginaw Valley. Ten players in for Grand Valley. Uh, okay, shot clock violation on Saginaw, so all the balls coming over to Grand Valley. Four minutes, 40 seconds left to play, so I doubt we'll see another point over here. Uh, in case you missed it before, 22 seconds left in the game on the other court. No, 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 that's the halftime. That is halftime, never mind. So they're, okay, so they're starting back up. Are you sure? I'm not sure about that. Okay, second half. Another catch from Saginaw. Uh, Spencer's, uh, Spencer, uh, he, uh, as far as we can tell, a, a Saginaw Valley player did in fact call a timeout. So yes, I don't know what they were thinking. They had the win, but. Now, for clarification, it wasn't a Saginaw Valley player. Saginaw Valley's coach had indicated to Felix Peroni that he wanted a timeout. Immediately after the captain had made that call for a timeout, his two players were unaware. They made a throw, one of the balls missed, the other one struck number four. Uh, Bailey, the last remaining player for Grand Valley. So everyone assumed that it was a win. Uh, Felix Prony went back and said, no, I had just received a call for a timeout. So he has to make the timeout from the time the call is made for the captain. It was just really unfortunate timing. Excellent cross-court play by Saginaw Valley, taking out number 28 for Grand Valley. Okay, nine players in for Grand Valley, nine players in for Saginaw. So once again, we're even. Quick update on the other court. We are into the second half for uh, JMU versus Central Michigan. JMU managing to squeak out one point in that first half, which is not what everyone was expecting. They were the lower-seeded team. 
So kind of the expectation was for Central Michigan to take control over there, and I believe at one point they did have control, but JMU did manage to come back and steal a point from them. So starting into the second half for that game over there, exactly three minutes left over here. Big catch by Grand Valley. Also a kill on the uh, on the left side. You can see him walking back uh, behind the back line. Do two players walking to the dead box for Saginaw Valley, but again, with less than three minutes, we're at 2.45 left in this game. I don't see another point happening here. Uh, I, smart money here, I think, for both teams is to save their arms because they have to realize nothing's going to come of this. Saginaw Valley riding that shot clock to the ragged edge. Two minutes left in this match. Timeout called by Saginaw again. I'm not really sure what he's got to say to them here with one minute and 50 seconds. It's very obvious that this half's going to end pointless, to me at least. Oh, oh, yeah, for sure. There's no way that the point is going. Well, I guess you get you get a couple timeouts a half, right? I mean, you might as well just. Yeah, might as well use them. Well, you get a little bit of a break. Maybe you, you calm everybody down, you get a breather, and then you say, hey, just, just ride this half out and let's be done with it. Now, this second half is going to be very big. They are going to switch sides. Grand Valley will have that brick wall advantage. Uh, so Saginaw Valley is going to be very much, uh, they're going to have to, they're going to have to do some planning during halftime because Grand Valley is in a position to win, uh, especially with them having the advantage this second round. I, oh, I'm still reeling over the fact that Saginaw missed that point just because of an unfortunate timeout call. That is... Well, I mean, on the, on the opposite coin, if they had called the timeout and the kid did not get hit, it wouldn't have mattered because the fact of the matter is he got hit and now we're down a point at Saginaw Valley. I mean, no hit, no problem. As eloquent as it is true, Ben Subcheck. And let's see, get a quick count here. One, two, three. Nine players in for Grand Valley. Six players in for Saginaw. Seven players, I'm sorry. Both, both teams are just kind of thrown into the dirt. They're really not trying super hard. I think they're just they're riding this, uh, this half out. Maybe posturing. I see some posturing off to the right here. Just intimidation factor. I don't know. One minute remaining. Number 24 for Grand Valley out. Hit on the leg. Still leaves seven players in for Grand Valley. 45 seconds left in play. Nice block by Saginaw there. 62, Hillebrand going down for a catch, but didn't even come close to him. No, I believe I, I, no, I believe he's right. It. Yeah, ref called it as well. It was off ball. Okay, that was a pretty solid hit. That was a nice hit. They were already on the back line. Couldn't get the ball up in time to block. 13 seconds left in the game. Half. So at this point, I wouldn't, if I were the captain, I would say no more throws. But they're going for it anyways. Nice catch. Woo! And that is going to be it. That is going to be it for the first half. Timeout is going to come back to bite us. Watch. Spencer, it already came back to bite. You would have been up one. All right, so that's going to be it for the first half. The players get a quick rest and some water. We'll be back, and uh, when we come back, we'll continue our coverage of this game.